Knowing what to wear to school and building a practical, professional and affordable wardrobe is a difficult task. In this episode, I interview Elissa Kaplan, who is a fashion designer and a teacher who started her own clothing store specifically for teachers. During this interview, I asked her to share some tips on how to build your teacher's wardrobe that makes you feel like the super teacher you are, whilst also not breaking the bank. It was so great to get to hear the story of another teacher who's also an entrepreneur. Sit back and relax, listen or watch this interview, and then remember to tell me what you thought in the social media platform of your choice. Hi, my name is Francois Nordea, and I am a super teacher, and this is Super Teachers Unite, the show that's all about motivating, inspiring, and supporting teachers. And I'm extremely excited for my guest. It's something totally different than what we typically do on this channel. Very excited to have Elissa Kaplan on the show today. Thank you very much for joining us, Elissa. Thank you, Francois. It's a blessing to be part of the show. Thank you. Awesome. And before we get into the interview, just a reminder that this show is brought to you by World Tracker, WILTracker.com. If you're a student teacher or you are a practicing teacher looking to mentor student teachers, the platform is all for you. WorldTracker.com brings student teachers, mentor teachers, and university lecturers who need to evaluate the student teachers together because we know that the journey towards becoming a super teacher starts at university level. And we want to create this community community of super student teachers and super mentor teachers to get together so that the next generation of teachers are equipped and ready to go. Of course, if you would like to be part of the live studio audience for these type of interviews or you want to have access, early access to the events that we do, please send your name through to the WhatsApp community. The WhatsApp community isn't a typical group. It's not a, a, a WhatsApp group because who's got time for more WhatsApp groups? What the WhatsApp service does is it's a one-on-one -on -one communication between you and me. If you've got any challenges or questions or you need some tips, you can just pop me a message or a voice note on WhatsApp. So if you want to be part of that, please send your name through to the number plus 2763-681-6410. I'm going to repeat that. That's plus 2763-681-6410. One zero. That's the WhatsApp group. I was reminded by one of the people in our WhatsApp service that I should tell people that you can get your CPTD points for watching these videos and being part of the community. So please make sure that um, when you spend time with us in these types of interviews, that you can claim your type one CPTD points. That's the, uh, the teacher initiated CPTD points. So be sure to claim those points. Righty ho, I know we're also streaming live on Facebook, that community. It's great being seeing you guys on Facebook as well, but I'm only taking questions and participation in the interview on our Crowdcast platform, and you can only get invited if you make use of our WhatsApp community. Righty ho, with all of that being said, at the end of today's interview, Elissa and I, as well as our studio audience, we're going to do the design a lesson challenge. So in order for us to know which uh, subjects and uh, uh, phase we will be doing our design a lesson challenge in, I want our audience to go and vote. You'll see at the bottom there is the polls button. Go and click on that and go and vote for the subject and the school phase that you want us to uh, use in our design a lesson challenge. But that's much later in the show. That's towards the end. But first, I'd like to get to know Elissa. Elissa, over to you. Tell us a bit more about Yuffie and Yuffie Clothing. Okay, so, well, Yuffie Clothing started in 2018. Um, I'm a qualified fashion designer because I knew since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And then life took a weird twist and turn in my career, can I say, because I studied fashion design, did my diploma, applied for a lecturer's assistant position. And with that, you have to teach and lecture, like a junior lecturer at the university. And I did my degree. And afterwards, they said to me, listen, we want you to stay on for another year as junior lecturer. You can choose either a master's or a PGCE. And a lot of people will say, what do you 
why don't you take a master's? And I'm like, mm, I'm already teaching, so why not go into teaching? So I did my PGCE and I knew exactly that I wanted to go into art education as well as um, English because I knew that my high school where I went didn't have arts, so I went into that direction. And then somehow I combined my passions for fashion design and teaching all in one. So I spoke to teachers and they said, you know what, why don't you design for us? And it all just came to me. And I said, you know what, you actually make sense. Let me design something for us. That's that's amazing. I, I I firmly believe that if if you're a good teacher, you can never stay out of the teaching profession. There's going to be some way, even if you never thought that you'll become a teacher, that that will happen. I know that happened to me. I never wanted to be a teacher ever in my life. And after the first few hours of actually teaching in a grade nine classroom, I fell in love with the profession and don't want to do anything else. So it it looks like it's a similar trajectory for you. Is that, that's exactly. that's very. Really, how do you how do you experience the, the the difference because you you were a lecturing assistant um, and now teaching high school? Do you find there's a there's a difference between between teaching at university level and teaching at school level? Well, I was in the creative area, like with the design studies and with arts, visual art, and everything. So, I think the maturity levels that's definitely different. So you don't really necessarily to discipline your students as much as you need to discipline your grade eight or nine so you know, that is definitely a difference but with the visual arts that i'm busy with now it's a blessing to teach grade 10 to 12 which are almost at the same intellectual level you can say as a student but students are challenging because they are also working people and getting time to do their assignments and all of that that's also a challenge but you know i don't know it's it's quite vast difference between the maturity levels yeah yeah so it, it's awesome that you have the privilege to to combine these passions that you have the passion for fashion design and the passion for teaching um, at the same time but now you you've you've seen that 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 niche area of designing clothes specific to teachers is there is there something that you've discovered uh, or, or, or 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 got uh, uh, hold of that uh, is different between designing for like just the I almost want to say the typical person uh, versus designing for a teacher. Is there is there slight differences? Okay, so each and every school we know we have our guidelines as to what you should wear, and we know the rule book off by heart because if you just you wear the the wrong shoe or the wrong shirt, you get reminded of it very quickly that it's not allowed. So in the corporate world, you know, there's certain dress. Um, codes that you need to adhere to as well as in school but especially because we work with learners we need to always you know we have to look professional but we also need to you know the big thing about teachers is you need to hide skin that might you know attract a young male or <laughs> female so we we can't walk around with flesh hanging out or you know we have to cover up certain areas so that is a big challenge because it's not just you might feel like you're covering up everything, but your shoulder, for instance, may not show. So you have to really think out of the box as to how you're going to design something that's flowy enough, but you can have your arms showing, but not showing permanently. So that is a very, very challenging topic, basically, because it's not just I'm designing pants or I'm designing a dress. You have to adhere to those certain rules. And the dress codes, I hope for all schools are exactly the same because then you almost like create a general standard across the country and everyone can wear the same, you know, you, you set the standard by what you wear and others will pick up exactly from that. Mm. So yeah, and it is a big challenge because those, you have to pay attention to the small details. <laughs> yeah, I, I know we've we've got the, the dress code that's been, mm -hmm. uh, um, that, that say says God, and we, we try and uh, adhere to that. But in my experience, now I have to I have to um, just admit my ignorance because from fashion design and uh, uh, stylish wear, that's not really my forte. Um, recently, I've I've maybe tried to up my 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 dress sense a little bit, but it's never been great, and I don't think it'll be at at uh, an advanced level. But from my limited experience, um, I know that teachers. Um, 
and I, dare I even say that my female colleagues are a bit more bitchy with each other when it comes to clothing. If if there's one little step out out of the 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 guidelines or whatever one individual at the school, maybe it's a it's a deputy principal or something like that. If they deem something to be too risque, then it's it, it's quite quick that uh, that they pounce on uh, and it sounds very I mean even just the language I'm using is very toxic but it, it can create quite a toxic school atmosphere is that something that you've experienced as well I think with my first years of teaching I was at two different schools and at the one school there was the, yes you do get those teachers they will snap a bra strap if they see it just sticking out where it's not supposed to or you get wow. sent home because you look like you're going to a bri so, I mean, we get those teachers, but um, I think if all the staff get together and they actually con like have a conversation and talk to each other and say, listen, look at this person, how she's dressed, and this is what we're talking about, what we want from you, instead of walking around and creating like different um, expectations from different teachers saying to this one, oh, this is acceptable because it looks fine with your body, but it doesn't look fine with this body. So I think that is also very important that teachers, female teachers especially, need to be educated as to what works well with their body and why it doesn't work well or why it's a problem for this teacher or for the, for the school. Um, and understanding what the reason is be behind the rule that was set. So sometimes we do feel offended if we get sent home or we are asked to put a jersey on or something, but we need to also understand from their point of view exactly why it's bothering them. Um, and we know that some people tend not to address the older teachers. They would rather address the younger ones because it's easier telling them to get dressed properly than to talk to someone else. But then it creates that almost stereotype where the younger ones are like, but that person's wearing that and I'm not allowed to wear it. So I think the, the most important thing is to get everyone together and have examples and say, this is what we are talking about. And if you have this body shape or if you are like this, stay away from this and we won't hammer you. And yeah, so I think that is the most important thing is getting everyone together and actually just sorting out the issues that are behind the reason. Yeah, but I, th I think one of the, the other challenges here is that fashion in general is quite a, mm -hmm. a, a, a subjective thing. Um, and what one person likes or deems appropriate versus what another person likes or deems appropriate is difficult. It's difficult to, to meet each other mm. in the middle. Um, in the middle, but, yeah. But, but I agree with you. I think it's very important that we that we have a discussion with everybody together and say, you know what, this is the, the I almost want to say, the value that we are going for. Um, mm. and, 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 and of course, it's this is such a, a, a difficult subject to actually address in the first sense because um, we we know that our I almost want to say our clientele, but the person the people that we are teaching don't need further detraction from focusing on their work. And I know yes. I I have to tell this this story. I I remember the other day I had this one outfit that I used to wear, and and this will say a lot about my my dress sense. Um, it's basically a, a black pant, one black uh, 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 pants, and then I had this. It wasn't pink and it wasn't purple, but it was somewhere in between. Uh, 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 I, I don't even know what, what color you, you can call it, but that, like short sleeved buttoned shirt. And I wore a black tie with it. Now, before the fashion police screams at me, I know what I did wrong. But the, 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 I never thought to like uh, or thought twice about it. But one day, one of the kids, I think it was a grade 11 or grade nine kid, probably grade nine. He came up to me like in front of the whole class said, sir, it looks like you're working at game. <laughs> I know. I know, right? I never thought of that. But the kids were like like that. And I never wore that outfit ever again. But just, just that detracting that, you know what? It's not – we are there to learn. You don't want to be a, a further mm -hmm. distraction. Um, exactly. with, what you, with what you are wearing on the one side. But then on the other side, you still, as a teacher, you want to express your individuality and you want to wear things that make you feel professional. So um, I, think, I think the question that I want to, want to get to is how do you balance that between the, the, the restrictions of the dress code and still having your own sense of identity? Okay, so it's something I really pride myself in. I don't 
buy a lot of new clothes. Yes, I do design my own Yiffy wear and I, I wear the samples in order to promote it as well. But something the kids always tell me is, ma'am, you never wear the same outfit. When in fact, I wear exactly the same clothes as the previous year even. I just mix and match with items that I know work. So if I wore something to work and someone says to me, you look very nice in that top, then I know, aha, the top's working. And the kids also react to that like they reacted to your outfit as well. Um, if you know something works, then work with those items. I always say that a nice pattern is nice, a nice color is nice, but we should also, as much as we want to stay in trend, if you know that a nice blouse or shirt looks nice, try to get in a variety of colors and then you can mix and match with skirts, pants, um, with dungarees or whichever you feel like mixing it up with. And I think in that sense, you can keep your individuality because you can dress it up with nice earrings or headbands um, and make it your own. And everyone always asked me that in an interview when I was an English teacher, you're a fashion designer, but you want to teach English, how are you going to keep your creativity? And same thing with English, making English creative, you can also be creative in the way you present yourself to your learners. You don't have to look like the, the doll in the shop and dress according to that. You can always make it your own by adding something of your own. That, that's so cool. There's so much uh, from, from that answer that you just gave that, that we can mine because I, I believe that we should express our individuality and our creativity in, in what we wear. But it's yeah. almost like uh, I know for a fact that I didn't grow up with, with the notion of like dress sense and, uh, mm -hmm. and stuff. I, I never cared about that. That wasn't on, on, the, fore, on the foreground of my, of my upbringing or, or even the, the, the friendship circle that, that I moved in. Um, so I'm a total uh, noob when it comes to to dress sense. But one thing you mentioned that's that's very interesting is the fact that you don't need to have um, a, a new outfit for school for every single day. Mm -hmm. But you can you can mix and match with the items that you have. So I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask you give us a few like basic items, basic wardrobe items that that every teacher should basically have. Okay, so. The people who know Yiffy, they know that I'm not one that's about big, bold prints. If I have a print, it's here and there, because I feel like that creates a season. And then as soon as the season is over, people tend to throw it out. But the moment you make something that is almost neutral, beautiful colors, then you want to wear it more and it will last longer. So yeah, something each and every teacher should have is a proper skirt either in black or in neutral color, not necessarily bold colors. I think the bold one is there for those days you want to surprise the kids where you wear your plain outfits maybe the whole week and then on a Friday, boom, you have something colorful and bright. Um, a very nice appropriate button-up shirt. I'm not talking about like a school shirt. You get beautiful ones like mine, the satin ones that we have, or you get nice denim ones like this one I'm wearing. And you can wear it when you are like I'm, not teaching right now. You can wear it to work or you can wear it wherever you want to. Um, that's very important. You need to have a good coat because a coat could also make it or break it. I feel like it because if you wear your big puffy jacket, which is very comfortable and warm, it doesn't necessarily go with your outfit and it's hiding everything you're wearing underneath. So if you have a nice coat, also neutral colors, then you can mix and match as well with other outfits. You can wear it with pants or dresses or skirts. Um, a very nice dress. We know that teachers, we cannot go higher than the knee. So let's stick to the knee length like dress. Um, I think very nice dresses to have is your normal um, empire line dress, which goes underneath your bust area. And that's a nice flowy dress. You look feminine in it. So I feel like those are the basic things you need, but stick to some neutral colors with a splash of color because that's the color and the print will surprise the kids. So I think not to go too bold with just buying patterned items or outfits and not going too bold with the fashion trends at the moment because a trend is a trend, it will die out. And then you sit with another problem and that is what am I gonna wear tomorrow? Yeah, so that, that that's very very interesting and important that you have like the base a uh, base outfit or base wardrobe, and then mm. uh, you ac accessorize because accessories make something pop. Mm. 
Um, and, oh, and, the you st- and trousers, very good pair of trousers that are comfortable, not tight fit. That's very important. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And, and and the fact that you can mix and match. So you can, mm. like, on one day have, have the skirt and a shirt with a jacket, and then you can just rotate between the three items the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I think I can't remember the the math around it, but it's with something like I think with eight different pieces of clothing, you can make something like I think it was twenty four, twenty eight types of like unique um, outfits. Mm-hmm. D- don't that is exactly what I do. That is exactly what I do. And the kids always tell me, "Ma'am, you must have a massive closet." No, I don't. I have a normal standard size. <laughs> closet and it's it's true if I, I wear my black pants today and i wear a dress over it or a nice top over it next week i wear those exact same pants with something else and they don't even notice hmm. so it's all about mixing and matching and i believe in not spending too much money on different items you can really make do with what you have and i think that's a very valid valid point because all teachers will tell you the first thing that clothes are expensive and we don't have a massive uh, salary so how if if you if you were a, like a starting teacher or I, I typically tell my fourth years to already start thinking of their their teacher wardrobe if you have to start buying uh, uh, clothes for your profession as a teacher what how would you start building that wardrobe okay so i think they should stop looking just like at the whole word teacher because that creates a stereotype people think oh this is a teacher outfit it's not you're not supposed to dress or buy or spend your whole salary on a teacher's wardrobe you should dress yourself because i always say that your profession shouldn't determine your wardrobe Mm -hmm. so important thing is to buy these you know you need your pencil skirt or a, a proper nice skirt if you want a flare skirt or pencil skirt depending on your body type that is very important because a plain black skirt you can wear with anything. Um, start with buying that. Then a nice jacket or coat, like I said, that's very important. A nice jacket, almost like a suit jacket. If you look on my website as well, I tend not to make my jackets. I've got a waterfall jacket, like with the, I've got, there's plain colors, I think, burgundy, and there's floral patterns as well. They're not expensive. They're like three fifty. It's affordable, but I mean, it's something that you will look classy and feel classy while wearing it. But it's not. It didn't cost you an arm and a leg. So buy small items, buy quality because that will last you longer. Um, mm. A nice jacket, shirt, skirt, pants, and then build on what you're wearing with it. That is very important. And don't spend too much money. Um, Yes, we do have some expensive items, but that obviously comes along with factories and all of that. But I'm not going to go into that. But just focus on if you're not buying it now today, rather save up to buy a quality item that you can wear with multiple items next Mm -hmm. month. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You don't you want, don't want to buy fast fashion because mm-hmm. number one, the, the the ethics around that um, is is already amazing. And I think that's something we need to think about. Our our millennial teachers, or the millennial generation of teachers at the moment, and when Gen Z starts moving in, we've got a lot more consciousness around the the way in which products are made. And mm-hmm. fast fashion um, has got a lot of ethical issues around it. It's got a lot of um, environmental waste issues yeah. around that, and then. It's not good for your pocket because it might seem like it's cheap in the moment and I can buy a lot of clothes, but mm. you'll have to replace them quite often. And that, yes, that has a, a, an impact on your, on your wallet. So what I typically, uh, the advice I give my student teachers is to start off every month and just buy one item. You don't have to buy every single thing at once. I think that's a major mistake, especially after you've graduated. You're like, okay, I'm going to be a teacher, and now I need to get a teacher wardrobe. And now I'm going to like go into debt to buy a wardrobe. I think that's the, the biggest mistake mm. that teachers can make. Um, so like every month, buy one or two items of clothing, and then um, it'll yes, and if it's too expensive it now, then just save a little bit and go get that quality item. And mm. for me, a lot of our items aren't very expensive because I know what a teacher feels like when they get their salary. You don't want to spend too much money. So if there's an expensive item on your fee, it's because 
you know it's quality it's very good quality and the cheaper items because i know that it's a good quality material it's made of good like it's good quality but it doesn't necessarily need to cost you an arm and a leg because i know that it's something that you can wear more than once and like the cheaper items i don't want to like i don't need to make a lot of money from it because i know what a teacher feels like and if you want no. a good quality i always say like designer dresses as well I can make a matric fair well dress for three thousand. Another designer could make it for eighty thousand. Just a rough example, but I know that I offer. I don't want to rob someone, but I offer yeah. the same quality. And and I think that's that. That's why I like the work that you do. And I've been following your Instagram page for for a while now. And I, I think that's the whole concept of a uh, buy teachers for teachers. I I love that, and I love the idea of supporting other teachers and teacher entrepreneurs specifically. And we'll we'll get into into that because I definitely want to chat about the entrepreneurial side of it as well. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, very important to talk about shoes. Um, heels. Okay, I I'm so out of my depth here, but I I know I know my community. Heels or 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 pumps. What? How? Where, where should teachers put themselves? I know that on day one, each and every young teacher, every teacher starting a new school, they wear heels, and they quickly learn a lesson, and they say, uh, -uh not again. Mm -hmm. So on special days, when you really feel like you can do it, be my guest. But I think in in the sense of you're standing in front of a classroom. If you're not sitting behind your desk, which we shouldn't be doing, we should be interacting with our learners, your feet are going to kill you at the end of the day. So you can still have something giving you a little bit of height. You get the nicest little boots and shoes that are wedges or a big heel, because that usually helps. But stilettos and all those shoes really kill you right through the day. It's not going, I'm not going to lie. So comfort is really important because the moment you start feeling uncomfortable in front of your class, your learners pick it up. Yeah. If you're going to stand there, oh, my feet are killing me, they know. And that's not going to really create a good impression. And the moment you wear heels again, they're going to say, ma'am, are you sure you're doing the right thing because you're wearing heels? Remember what happened last time. Um, <laughs> and I feel like if you want to wear heels, make sure you've got a backup pair of pumps in your, shoe, in, your, in your bag or in the back of your classroom because you are going to resort to that later in the day. Yeah, have those have those backups ready because you, so it, it, some days you are more active than you are on other days. Um, and we know how how unpredictable a school day can be. That yes. in one in in one instant it's a very chill day, and the next moment, like you're on playground okay. duty or you have to go and assist somewhere in the hall or it's like it just gets crazy so having yeah. having some backup shoes in your in your classroom or maybe just in your car isn't yeah. a isn't a bad idea okay. um cool so um if if you could give and i see i see in the in the chat they're asking for four maybe three or four uh comfortable types of, of shoes that you can can recommend let's say you start you start your your teacher wardrobe what shoes would you recommend to start off with Okay, so obviously the go-to shoe is a pump. A pump is appropriate, it covers your toes, it covers your foot, and it's very comfortable. But make sure you buy, if you need something that, if you've got foot problems, go to Green Cross and buy yourself a nice pair of pumps there, or at Crocs, because they've got good quality, it's gonna last you long, but it's a shoe that you can wear to work or wherever you go, and it's comfortable. No, so wait, 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 no, wait, wait. You you didn't just say Crocs, did you just say Crocs? You, no, not like those Crocs. You know, like you get the brand, but the pump. Okay, so it's not. I'll so send you the picture. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing in my mind's eye. I'm seeing these these shoes with holes in them. Like Never. Oh, please not. Okay, no. so Crocs. So you know that that's a fashion trend trending right now with teenagers. Again, why? I promise you, they are crazy about it. The holes. And even stripes on it, and I would die. No, not yeah. those crocs. Make sure okay. it's pumps. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good to know you. You had me going for a while. I'm not judging the new generation. If I have to think back of the buffaloes that I wore when I was at school, with those platforms. Five like stackies. Exactly. So um, I, I won't be judging the the trend because uh, I, I know... won't go to that trend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So, 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 so pumps, pumps are very important. You get. Good leather ones as well from Willie's and all those places. Um, then another good shoe. I don't know what the school's policies are around um, sneakers or um, sandals, but I know that a pair of sandals with nice jewels on it or something that's neutral that you can wear over and over again, that is very nice. But there are also certain rules as to what you may wear. You're not allowed to wear a flip-flop, for instance, what you wear to the beach. A nice 
oh, can say like glitzy, that type of sandal is very nice, or that covers your foot a little bit, that's also a very nice sandal. Um, a boot, I don't like really, my preference is not a long boot, I like ankle boots because that you can wear winter or summer, you can pair it up with stockings in the winter with a nice dress or skirt. Um, and sometimes having a slight little heel to it is also very nice because it won't tire you out, but you will also feel like you're not flat on the ground. So that's also very important. Um, and then, ooh, I love fallies and I love supporting local businesses with their fallies. So um, I think a leather shoe is always a, a, a winner because you can also wear like a closed fally or one that looks like a little school shoe. There's a lot of brands that I support in terms of that, but fallies are also very nice. Um, no, what else can I say? No, that's. I think that's a that's a great that's a great start. I mean, I'm le I'm learning so much. Uh, that's why I love doing these type of interviews, especially when it's a field that's totally out of my depth, yeah. so that I so that I can learn as well. So that's cool. But I want to start touching on on the notion of being an entrepreneur and a teacher at the same time. Take us back to those first moments when you started Yiffy. What was that like? Okay, so it's been brewing in my mind for a very long time. I knew that I never wanted a boutique. I wasn't a boutique person. And I always said, I don't want to be a, like a wedding dress designer. Yes, I do do those custom things, but it's not something that I see myself doing forever. So I like doing outfits for people. And then I started this baby. One of my friends said to me, my colleagues, um, and she said to me, why don't you go online? Look at these brands. You'll love this. And you don't have to work with a client themselves and you can be yourself over the internet and send nice emails and promote your brand and I said to her, you know what it's actually something to think about so it took a while I think I started in the end of 2017 I started thinking of the ideas and I started with branding reaching out to designers for logos and all of that and it only started officially I launched Yiffy in August 2018 but the website has been running since March that year because there's a lot of planning. And like I said, I don't want to start a business, but I don't have a website and I don't have pay fast and I don't have this. I don't want things that's going to make it difficult for the consumer. I want something to be ready to go. So it took me a while to get everything going and I didn't know what I was going to call it. I didn't want to call it EK or something with my name because that's not for teachers. Yeah. So I was standing there with this friend he said to me, stop thinking of other outfits and design something for us. And I said, okay, fine, I'll do that. And at that same moment, another older teacher came past and she said, hey, Yiffy, what are you doing today? And it no. just hit me. And I was like, that is the name. It's going to be Yiffy. And then I started with branding and all of that. Um, yeah, and the baby was born from there. And I, I knew that... I wouldn't be able to design extravagant outfits or anything, but I knew what I needed and what, what my colleagues needed. And as the people started speaking out, I started naming the outfits according to the person and the need they had. So a lot of my outfits are named after colleagues or people that made an impact on my life as a teacher and something that represents them personally and their personalities. So that, is basically how Yiffy was born, but it is a very, very tough line to be in because it's not something that I can just say to the factory, make a thousand of those. Mm -hmm. I have to sit behind my machine and make it. And along with teaching during the day, I had a lockdown now, so we don't have any sport or extramural activities, but in normal circumstances, that's what you have. You get home, then you have your family to care about, and then business starts. So something that everyone hammers me about is that I don't sleep, so, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because I know that I have a role as a teacher, so I can't neglect that part, and I have a role as an entrepreneur, so I can't let that one down. So I'm trying to balance it is the tough part. But you know what? If you know what your priorities are and you get them in line, then yeah, you can deal with it. Well, that's but but I think that's that, that that's really um, commendable is the fact that that you're a teacher first, and mm -hmm. you still have your responsibility as a teacher. And I'm I'm just thinking about like preparation and marking, and where where do you find the time to also run a business? And um, I, I 
I'll be one of the people that's going to also jump into the bandwagon and be very concerned about the amount of time that you spend uh, not sleeping because uh, you need to throw <laughs> your sleep in. But I love, I'm loving the the hustle and 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 what it takes to start this off. Um, and and I mean, two years, well, a year and a half ish later, just look at the success that that Yiffy is making. Um, I just need to mention this quickly because we do have a, a small international audience uh, for the show as well, and they would, I, I can hear them shouting in my ear already that what is this yuffy thing um, and maybe you can jaffy. answer what, what, what's this juffy clothing but maybe maybe elaborate on on the on the name because it is an afrikaans name yeah so that's exactly why i put it in my bio on instagram and facebook as well because people tend to say yuffy juffy they don't know what it is but teacher in afrikaans our language is yifro and yifro a little short um abbreviation we tend to call people yuffy and that's basically where it comes from. So Yuffie means teacher. So yeah, that's a, yeah. that's exactly how it came about. <laughs> and it's it, it it can be an endearing term, but it can also be like a de derogatory term, depending on who it comes from <laughs> and and the, and the type of tonality that I the guess. person uses, like Yuffie. Uh, you know those those type of things. But I I like this idea of taking control of the term and like making it something. You're just embracing. You know what? I am a yuffie. Um, and I know it sounds a bit weird for me to say that I'm a yuffie, but you know what? <laughs> I can I can associate myself with that because uh, the yuffro pot typically refers to to the female uh, okay. teacher, um, and that's something that needs to change. We need we need men's clothing as well. And I've been hammering you for a while now to start thinking about men. I know we are the minority in education, but we we also want to have uh, uh, these awesome outfits because I can promise you, if you start a, a men's fashion line, there is definitely going to be some takers. Yes, and that's exactly why I didn't choose to make my brand Yuffie Clothing. It says it in the name, but the logo itself says Yuffie because Yuffie is a brand, and that's exactly what I want to do. So even though you've been hammering about it, um, because I'm sitting behind the machine most of the time, I don't really have the time necessarily to make big varieties, but it's definitely in the pipeline. I'm thinking of doing nice ties, first of all, because I think that's something – in assembly days or whatever, then you can wear your nice tie. And I mean, it's very colorful. Even the, all the male staff could wear the same tie one day and the kids will notice. It's something that will excite them. I know that when I was in primary school, one of my math teachers, he had the most colorful ties in the world. And I will, I'll never forget them because it's something that I remembered him with. Um, but yeah, nice jackets and coats is also very important in shirts, even though we don't want to go too crazy with men's fashion. We can still make it very fashionable, like the jackets with the nice floral lining or a printed lining in the middle. That's something that we can look forward to. And like I say, it's a brand. So Yiffy doesn't have to say Yiffy clothing that it's for females. It's a brand. And that's why they're stationary in line and all of that. And that's really something I'm looking forward to expanding to. And you'll be the first. <laughs> Uh, I, I wouldn't be the ideal model, but I'll, I'll, I'll model and I'll send you photos. I promise you that. Uh, nice that'll, be, that'll be cool. <laughs> um, I, I love ties. I absolutely love them. You can also think of like uh, um, uh, bow ties, also quite a, a nice, a nice fashion, uh, a fashion thing. So that. that's, yeah, let's let's do it. I'll model it for you. Um, I'll wear a shirt. I promise. Um, I'm seeing cool ideas coming through here. Reversible ties, two in one. That is quite interesting. Well, I, 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 I have to. I have to mention this. I love the fact that the, that my mom supports me in everything. <laughs> that I do. So, uh, uh, having a big shout out to my mother Rihanna that's uh, in the chat here. It's also she. She loves making clothes. Uh, she she's also quite uh, funky when it comes to that. So she's got some great ideas. I'll, I'll put you in contact because the two of you will. will <laughs> Keep on chatting forever. Um, that. So that's so, so that's quite quite cool. But advice for other teachers that had that that wants to start a, a business, who wants to run something on the side. What, what what type of advice can you can you give them? Okay, so first of all, it is one of those things you need to have your time in place. So I'm a person I don't sleep a lot because I run on it for years now. But if you know that you have to get your sleep and you've got a busy family then make sure that you know that if you're going to need assistance you get assistance and if you don't if you're not able to do it on your own because priorities are very important i know that that's one of the first things my school staff said to me 
make sure you don't let the one down because school's still your first priority. Make sure that you put that first. And that is balance is the biggest thing. If you know that you can balance it, go for it. Because I think empowering teachers, empowering each other is very important. And I mean, you need to think of yourself as well in the same sense. What are you going to do the day you can't teach anymore? I always say that because I did fashion design, it doesn't mean I can just make clothes. I can do interior pillows or whatever. I can be 80 years old and I can still make pillows and curtains. And I will still be able to provide an income for myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of cases, we don't know what our situation will be financially in terms of our spouses and your business, even if you can't teach anymore and you have to move somewhere else for your spouse to get a job and you're not able to get a job, your business could still be running. So I think that could really help. But as a teacher, you shouldn't be scared to take on new challenges. I mean, if you have a hidden talent or you've got an idea, go for it because you can still teach while doing it. And if you need assistance, you get assistance. It's not like you're going to do it all on your own. If you've got a good support system, go for it. Yeah, that, that that's amazing advice. And I think the, the the one thing, a lot of the teachers who I coach, they they ask me like, when will I find the time to do my passion? Then I say, okay, well, let's quickly do an audit of, of your week and find the, the, the downtime that you're actually wasting. Just think about the amount of time you're actually spending consuming social media and not exactly. actively posting and promoting the work that you do on social media. If you just even make that change between only consuming versus actually posting and talking about the things things that you love, you're already using your time a bit more productively. Look about the time you, you, you spend watching TV and ask yourself, is that really constructive time? I've got no problem with people watching series or, or watching TV and doing that in your downtime to relax. But do you have to binge watch an entire series? Or can you watch one episode and then get back to work and doing what you really love? Yes. If you really want to, to do it, you'll find the time to do it. Hmm. Yes, if there's a passion growing inside of you and you really want to light the fire, then nothing should stop you. You can always catch up on that series. There's no way that you're going to lose out on that because you can catch, catch it up. I'm one of those people, luckily for my machines being right in front of me, I don't watch a series and I don't watch anything. I listen. Audiobooks are amazing because I don't have time to sit and read a book, but I can listen to an audiobook. It's always in the background. Same thing with your series. It doesn't really mean you need to sit like this and watch the series. You can carry on with what you're doing. And if you need to switch it off and put an up. Same thing with marking. I don't know who else does it, but you know that you don't touch your phone for one hour. You don't do this for one hour. Otherwise, you're going to procrastinate and you're not going to get your work done. So it's the same type of discipline. You need to tell yourself, do I need this or can I catch it up over the weekend? You don't need to be a workaholic like me, but <laughs> you can get some downtime for yourself and do it in that time. I'm also about like, I don't judge people who watch TV. I do get my times that I watch TV, but for me, getting things that's going to wake me up at night, getting those things done, for me, I want that done now. <laughs> So there's there's definitely the way of, of of teachers getting involved in their own side hustles, and I think it's important that if that's something that you're interested in, that you that you start exploring it. I mean, just just give it a go. What's what's the worst that can happen? It's I mean, what, if it maybe, works, it works. If it doesn't, then you can still promote it within your friend group or your social group or in your town. Even it doesn't have to be a social media or like on Instagram success. If you can make a success from the people just being in your town, I mean, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, I mean, for the we, face masks, for example, there's people at my school who are in the finance department making face masks, and it's like a wildfire. It's not something she necessarily does, but almost every person in town is wearing one of her masks. I mean, that's a small business, and it doesn't have to be on social media. You can promote it by not spending screen time and just promoting it physically. Exactly. Um, and, and and we had a discussion before we started going live on how well your, your business is doing on face masks currently. <laughs> it's crazy. So I can't get a, ahead of myself because every time I launch 10 masks or just a small amount, then I get overwhelmed with messages on WhatsApp or on email. And then I try to get to those orders and then I don't spend time on the orders online. And that's why I actually said, you know what, let me just make some stock because I can't get ahead. It's really, really crazy. And I mean, the support is amazing. 
it's not like, I don't know how long it's going to last, but while we're all trying to stay safe, we might as well look fashionable. <laughs> exactly. And even, and even after, after the, well, let's, let's hope, after the coronavirus outbreak, I think it's going to take a while because a lot of people will still be, be fearful um, or just yes. at least want to play it safe and wear masks in public spaces. And it's so like it's, it's going to disappear to overnight. So we might, we will be wearing our masks all the time. And for me, I've got my nine masks that I've got for the different patterns that I make. And I mean, it goes with each and every outfit. I've got one for this outfit and it's reversible, my mask. So you can have one on each side. And you know, I think for now it's going well, but at the same time, I'm also not spending time designing and making the winter line because yeah. that's consuming my time. Well, you, you know what they say, a good entrepreneur doesn't work in their business, they work on their business. So I'm mm -hmm. sure expanding is going to happen soon on your side. And yeah. I really hope that uh, that your business just goes from strength to strength. We are running out of time, but I, I could really sit and chat about, I, who thought that I can chat about clothes for this long? But uh, before before we, we jump into some personal questions, I'd like to ask you, um, I'd just like to remind everybody that's watching live now to please go down into the polls section and just vote on the subject that you'd like us to include in the designer lesson challenge and also vote in the, the phase of schooling that you'd like us to design our lesson on. But uh, uh, while you guys do that, I've got some personal questions I'd like to ask Elissa. Elissa, tell us, what is your superpower? Staying awake. <laughs> <laughs> wow. With coffee or without coffee? Um, with coffee and maybe some energy drinks. <laughs> um, maybe. So we're not going to mention them. There's another expansion then uh, for your business. Start selling some yuffie coffee because something that you... <laughs> Uh, something that that's absolutely needed is for teachers to stay awake and uh, and we love that's we a love our idea um I you can have that idea for yuffie coffee yeah yuffie coffee and then also um yuffie wine get yourself some oh. some yuffie wine yuffie coffee i we promise you need it. That's, that's, that's something teachers need to wear clothes. We absolutely drink wine and we drink coffee. So there, there you go. I'm, I'm <laughs> okay, that's I, I, I promise you I'll order my first Yuffie coffee with my, with my tie as soon as you, you, you got the men's range going. Um, tell us a story about a teacher that impacted your life, uh, the super teacher from your history that really made an impact. Okay, so I think my teacher was my business studies teacher in high school he was amazing um can i say his name he was really amazing um he made sure that we knew what we had to get ready for exams and he was a very strict teacher when he had to be but in the back in the day i think that was that's what made him memorable is that he adjusted to our times and at that time, it was mix it. So what he did was he added the entire class on mix it. And as soon as you go on, he could see and he took your phone. And then <laughs> you learned a lesson from that. So you never went on your phone in his class. And he tend to spoil us. He would say, listen, if you work hard during this week, then on Friday, we could have a picnic or whatever like that. But I'm not saying teachers should do that because we still had our lesson while snacking on something. I know that we called it Sweetie Friday. So, I mean, it's something that... He made a big impact on my life because I did very well in business studies, but he also he made us feel at home in his class. We could share stories with each other, and I think you know that's something I will always remember him by. He was amazing. <laughs> Well, there you go, Mir Harold. If you if you're watching <laughs> this, uh, big big ups to you. Uh, and I think that's very important that we start telling the stories of the teachers that impacted our lives. Because at the end of the day, we want to rather give a platform to the positive things happening in education instead of instead of just mm -hmm. showing what mainstream media is showing about teaching and education. Because there's a lot more fun things happening than what's uh, portrayed in media. We've got two questions from um, from our audience. Um, how does culture affect your designs so that is a big thing as well because um you need to understand that some cultures can't wear a certain art, art outfit or item and that is very important like i know um for jewish religion or muslim as well you cannot wear something where your knees are allowed to show or you know, like those things so that does affect it but i also look at my my margin and i see who wear my or my, my target market 
So I'm not targeting certain women, but I see who's more, I think at the moment I'm with a lot of Afrikaans people because they see Yiffy. But the moment the word gets out, then I can adjust my designs and make sure that I cater to all cultures as well. So at the moment, it's just looking out for those small aspects. But I think in the long run, it could really, if the business starts booming and it does expand, then I'll pay more attention to more cultural aspects of the design as well. Now that that's awesome, and I, one thing I want to mention, I did, didn't touch on it, but um, we can run over time. It's fine. Um, is that some of your outfits have got like it's like adjustable? So uh, um, please, please tell me about that because I know nothing about it. I just saw it on your on your Instagram. So that's exactly why I'm talking about things that you can mix and match. Today you can wear a dress and you can wear it with a cape that's covering your shoulders. But the moment you want to wear that dress out and about and you want to show your shoulders. You pop your arms through a hole and all of a sudden your dress has changed. Or you can wear it to the front and look the one tie dress. You can tie it to the front and it's plain at the back or you can swap it around and it's plain at the front. I love playing with outfits like the the um, the olive dress that I've got as well, the Mizrika. You can wear it as a overall dress with your straps or without and then it's just a skirt i love things that you can mix and match because people don't know then that it's the same thing they think that you've got maybe two dresses or yeah, i don't know that's just one of the things i like having something that people don't know that it's the same thing you can wear it over and over again and trick them <laughs> And and that's that, that's one of the ways of keeping the expenses low because you're paying for one for one outfit but you can exactly. wear it in three different ways exactly so that's uh, why i do that <laughs> <laughs> now you came from the design aspect i'm thinking mm -hmm. we need to save some money <laughs> uh, we, we've got one last question um, i'm not the tallest person so my body shape fluctuates so much when i gain a little or lose a little uh, i i assume it's gain a little weight or lose a little weight and especially after lockdown uh, it's there's a lot mm -hmm. more gaining than losing i know uh, I love dresses, but I'm very much a t-shirt and jeans kind of person because I wasn't raised with fashion sense at all. How do I plan my wardrobe? Okay, so first of all, with our t-shirts, we can make a plan. <laughs> we need to, like your t-shirt that you're wearing right now is pretty funky. I mean, there's a lot of companies as well. I'm all about supporting other people as well, which way print a t-shirt. So you can wear your t-shirt and put a nice, I don't want to say jacket, but you can have a nice caftan or something to put over it. And already you change your outfit. You can have a caftan today. You could have a jersey tomorrow. Same t-shirt and jeans, but you already look different. So that's one way you can do it. You can wear your t-shirt with a skirt as well, with one of, if it's a dungaree or an overall, you can wear that as well. Um, yeah, so you don't always have to wear frilly tops or button-up shirts. You can wear your t-shirt and just mix and match with something you put over or like trousers or skirts but if you don't like skirts you can always go for something funky like a dungaree that's also yeah. nice yeah. dress up a t-shirt on certain days and then like yeah you, know, you don't always have yeah. to look t-shirt and pants you can always mix it up Okay, awesome stuff. Rightio, we are going to jump into the design a lesson challenge. And I'm very excited for these challenges. I love hearing what other teachers and other uh, role players in education come up with. So just to explain again what the design a lesson challenge is, uh, the audience votes on the subject they want us to include. But what I do is I take the two most voted for subjects and we have to integrate that those two lessons um, into one. Um, and uh, with the idea is we want to showcase how you can brainstorm ideas for activities and lessons in the classroom. So our audience has chosen, if I quickly have a look here, it is a tie, but it's good. It's uh, English, so uh, that's great. And visual arts or creative <laughs> arts. Uh, I'm thinking our, our audience luckily this time decides to choose the subjects that the two of us, well, at least one of the two of us are, are most familiar with. And then the grade, the phase that they want us to target it to is let me quickly check it's the senior phase so it's grade seven to grade nine so our challenge is to design a lesson that integrates english and visual arts or creative arts for grade seven to nine right so what's your what's your initial thoughts Alyssa? what are we gonna do 
<laughs> That's exactly okay. So it's very broad. I mean, just having the subjects in mind without even having to uh, look at the CAPS document or the curriculum documents is difficult. But mm -hmm. this is where the audience always jumps in and helps us with maybe a topic or two. But from the um, from the creative arts or visual arts um, subject, what are some of the themes um, that you enjoy teaching? So I love art history because it opens up a whole new world. I mean, kids don't really understand history or they, they do history, but they're like, oh, it's boring. But the moment you start seeing these things and you see it on social media, then it's like, ah. I understand why I'm doing this. So art history is very, very fascinating to me. And coming from teaching English, the moment you start seeing something where you can link your English to, then it's like, ha ha, do you oh, guys remember okay. this? Okay, cool. So what, what would be what would be some of the, the art history? Uh, who, who, do, do you do like artists or themes? Or? Artists. Yes, okay. we do artists. And with each and every art movement, especially like where you go from expressionism or impressionism, each and every movement has its own themes and characteristics. So that's very nice because then you can see how the painting, some of us just look at painting and you don't know, but the moment you start knowing what is expressionist, expressionism and what is impressionism, you can actually see on the characteristics what the theme was and what differs in the two paintings. Okay, we've got we've got something in the chat here from V. She says, lettering in art, slogans perhaps, the power of words and catching attention of the audience. So here we immediately like linking it to mm -hmm. uh, to business and marketing as well. Um, so I like this idea of lettering in art, um, but then also uh, linking it back to like uh, uh, um, I also say expressive language. Like what's the type mm -hmm. of language you would use in marketing? So for me, I always believe in your figures of speech, your alliteration, because that gets people going, having the rhythm there. So I love alliteration. That's always great, catching, it's a catchy tune. Um, also, um, I love metaphors, because people, okay. you know, I don't know, for me, a metaphor is much bigger, because sometimes you can have your little quick slogan out there, and you allow the people to think a little bit what the meaning is behind it. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's you know, I like something. I like I like that idea of metaphors um and and maybe um or, 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 or what's it figures of speech mm -hmm. and and using that in art to depict so using an image to depict a, a metaphor or, or a, 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 a brilliant figure idea. Of We've yeah. we've got our lesson, so our activity <laughs> then uh, would be to to use uh, figures of speech or metaphors and visualizing them. Yes, uh, and analyze in, an artwork by using your figures of speech and saying that this depicts a metaphor for yes, yes. For, like I don't have a painting in mind now, but I mean you can always find a metaphor for the deeper meaning. So it's so I, I like that because because what one person gets from from imagery and that's what I love about art mm. is that it's very subjective. Yes. But then when you when when you link that to to the English language and, and figures of speech and and metaphors, then the individualism comes out from that. Exactly. Like if you take a picture of a staircase, a portrait of a or a you know, a painting of a staircase, you can say that the staircase could mean your journey going up in life. You have ups and you have downs. This one step might be a bit, bit of a rocky one with splinters or something, and it might cause you to fall down, but then there's another platform. And when you reach certain platforms in life, you have to rest and take a break before moving on to go to the next one. So, I mean, you can take a painting of staircase and you can have a deeper meaning in that. And with each and every step, you can also, yeah, there's experience from that as well. <laughs> so, so now we're moving into the life orientation space as well. <laughs> <laughs> How easy is it actually to start integrating subjects? Can we please, teachers, can we please start working with our colleagues? Because here's a science guy sitting next to, well, digitally, next <laughs> to a visual arts person. Two of us, uh, with the help of our audience, came up with a lesson idea and an activity idea um, uh, uh, within different subjects and this is how we can yeah. find the connections um so the I, I love the designer lesson challenge it just shows you how we in collaboration with each other can find the connections and make some exciting yeah. activities or lessons i mean i would have loved to do this activity if uh, if yeah. i were uh, something, 
I could always suggest to people wanting to combine those things. When I was an English teacher, not having the visual arts background then to teach, I always say to kids when they do poetry and they don't understand what's going on, create a picture. The moment you've got the picture in your mind, it becomes very easy to understand. And one activity I did, I took a boy who was very good at poetry, he wrote his own poems and raps, and I said to him, read this quick poem, don't tell the kids, and the moment you are ready, um, or oh, I showed him a picture, I showed him a picture, and I said to him, go and write a poem or a rap, and the moment you're ready, you're going to rap it to the class. And the moment he did that, I asked the kids to tell me what they saw. And the moment I put the picture on, some of them started crying because they said he explained it so visually or with his words that they couldn't believe it. It was exactly well, what they saw. So that I mean, is what you can do, create a picture. No, yeah, like I love that. I mean, it's, it's literally painting with words. So you start off with the image, you have the intermediary design a poem, and then after listening to the poem, every kid draw, makes their you own drawing. Yeah. And then you can see how it relates back to the, oh, that's such a great activity, man. Somebody mm -hmm. do that and post it on social media what the results were. I would really <laughs> love to, to see that. Now, before we before we sign off, Elissa, where can people find you if they want to order your amazing designs and clothes? Where do they do that? Okay, so you can find me on Facebook. You just type in Yiffy Clothing. Um, make sure it's Yiffy because there are other brands as well. Um, and then also on Instagram, you can find me at Yiffy Clothing. You can email me at info at yiffy.co.za. And you can go on the website, www.yiffy.co.za. Yes, you can find that's, me there. That's amazing. Um, I believe I'm already following you on all the social media yes. platforms. I believe everybody else should also go and make a dry, a dry and follow there. follow this guy. He's amazing what he's doing for teachers. You are too kind. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. I, appre I appreciate that, that that plug as well. So that's all that we've got time for today. Thank you to, uh, to everybody that's joined us live and watching us on Facebook. And if you're watching the recording later on Facebook, YouTube, or listening to this on the podcast platforms, thank you for taking the time. One last time, I would like you to claim your CPTD points, your type one CPTD points. If you spent the time with us to now, that's a whole hour of professional development and you had fun. Imagine that. Make sure that you that you claim your CPTD points. Thank you so much to World Tracker, worldtracker.com uh, for bringing this episode to you. Make sure you go and check out their platform. Go and register on the platform if you'd like to be a mentor teacher or if you are a student teacher or university lecturer, go and register on the platform and take part in everything that World Tracker does. One last time, if you'd like to be part of the WhatsApp community, send your name to plus two seven six three six eight one six four one zero and become part of the Super Teacher Network. Until next time, my name is Francois Nordea and with me, I've got Elissa Kaplan and we are Super Teachers. <laughs>